Here is the symbol for a resistor. In the last lecture, we used a bulb and we can replace the bulb with this resistor symbol. In fact, we can replace any load with a resistor symbol in a modeling situation. If we just want to do a rough model of our uh, domestic electricity supply, we could replace, say, a fridge or a iron with a resistor. Now, this may not be completely correct. There may be other aspects we have to consider, but in a very simple analysis, this is what we could do. And so now we are going to look at the ways, the two ways that resistors can be combined. Here we are, we have two resistors in parallel. And this situation would be the one that models our domestic electricity supply, where we have the same voltage, V, across all the appliances. In this case, there would only be two appliances consisting of two different resistances. And since they would probably be different, the two devices would draw different currents, which would be denoted by I1 and I2. This is the branching that we spoke about, the branching of the current that we spoke about in the last lecture. Notice that I've marked a node there at the top where the total current coming from the battery supply or the electricity company, if you prefer, divides to supply the individual currents for the two loads. We can refer to those resistors as loads. That's another way of describing them. So we're going to return to that idea in a minute. But now we're going to draw a series connection for two of our loads in series. Now by combining them in this manner, there are several interesting things that appear. The same current I is going to flow through both loads, but there is going to be a voltage drop across each of the loads, meaning that the two voltages are going to add up to your supply voltage. So in this particular configuration, the voltages are not the supply voltage, but are somewhat less. The best uh, example I can give you that would represent this kind of connection with which you might be familiar is a set of Christmas tree lights where the small bulbs are all connected in series going from one to the other. And if one bulb goes out, the whole circuit is broken and all the bulbs go out. So if a bulb is removed or goes bad, all the bulbs go dark. And maybe some of you have had that experience and it poses a bit of trouble to find out which is the bulb that is in fact blown. Well, that's obvious also from an observation of this circuit because since there's only one circuit there, if you remove a connection at any point, the current ceases to flow through the entire uh, series circuit. Let us return to the uh, idea now uh, that we presented already and uh, say that you, it is readily apparent from the two circuits that we have before us that the two currents I1 and I2 are going to combine or add together to make the total current that the battery is supplying. Whereas in the series case, the two voltages are going to add together to come up to the total voltage that is being supplied by the power source. 
Now this brings to mind two very powerful expressions that were derived by a fellow named Kirchhoff. And on the left, we have Kirchhoff's current law, because we are combining currents. And on the right, we have Kirchhoff's voltage law, because we are combining voltages. Now, we have to be careful here, but if you notice the point marked node in the resistors in parallel, the node does not store any current. Whatever current comes into the node is going to go out to the two resistors. It is not a storage of electricity. It is merely a connection. So, because the node does not store current, we can say that the total current coming in must be equal to the total current going out. And you can see the arrows there to indicate the current flow. We have big I coming in, and we have I1 and I2 going out. If we use the convention all the time that the current coming in is going to be represented by a negative symbol, and the currents going out are going to be represented as, quas as positive quantities, that is, we're using the polarity or sign to indicate the current direction, whether the current is going in or out of the node, then the algebraic sum of all the currents is going to come out to zero. If we move the I over to the other side, it will become positive and we will be back to the original expression, I equals I1 plus I2. Now, looking at the voltage situation on the other diagram on the right, we see that since the voltages are going to add up to the big V, V1 and V2 will add up to the big V, if we put an arrow in the clockwise direction, as you can see there, and we go around this circuit, and we take the voltages through the resistors where we go from plus to minus, in the case of V1 and V2, we write those as positive. And when we come through the battery going from minus to plus, we write the polarity as negative, then we have a similar situation in the voltage law that we had in the current law. And that is that the algebraic sum of all the voltages around a closed circuit will equal zero. And once again, from a mathematical point of view, if we carry the V over onto the other side of the equation, we will be back to our V equals V1 plus V2. These are powerful formulas that will help you in all your electronics life. So please make sure that you understand them and remember them. Now, getting back to our resistors in series and in parallel, we ask ourselves the question, what is the equivalent resistance? If we were to remove R1 and R2 and replace them with a single resistor R, we want to be able to ascertain what the total resistance R would be for either the resistors in parallel or the resistors in series. And we're going to use Ohm's law to do it. As you can see, the sums of the currents equal the total current. And as you can see from Ohm's law, we can replace I in any situation with V on top of R. 
And since the V is the same, there is only one V in the circuit, but we have several different R's. When we do that, we realize that we end up with the formula shown at the bottom. Now this applies to any number of resistors. This is a generic formula. So if I had R3 and R4, we would just have to add the terms plus one over R3 plus one over R4 for as many as we have. So it's a universal formula that we have derived. Now in the case of the resistors in series, we see that we have the voltages adding up and once again we can replace any voltage with its current times resistance by using Ohm's law. So as shown there, our total resistor times the total current would have to be the same as the sum of each of our resistances times the total current. In which case, as we remove the V in the previous expression, we can now remove the I and we are left with the total as being just the sum of the resistances. Once again, this formula is applicable to any number of resistors. So the total, if we have four or five, would be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5. Now, we're going to learn something more about these resistors in series and parallel. And we're going to more specifically examine the concept of voltage and current division. Starting on the right this time, we have clearly a voltage divider in the sense that part of the voltage, the voltage is being divided between R1 and R2. And on the left, we have a current divider because the current is being divided between R1 and R2. Now, we are interested in what fraction of the total current is flowing in either branch of the two resistors or what fraction of the voltage is present across a particular resistor in the voltage divider. In the case of the current, starting from the total resistance formula, it would be fairly easy by mathematical means to come to a formula which shows that the resistors multiplied together divided by the sum will give the total resistance. So all we have done is apply a little elementary algebra on the expression to render it in a more usable form. Now going back to our initial Ohm's law and using it with the above formula, if you carefully follow the steps algebraically, you will see that we can substitute the IRT in place of the V to end up with the I1 current as a fraction of the total current. And the fraction of the total current is given by the term at the end of the right, R2 over R1 plus R2. So clearly our current divider or the fraction of current that flows through a particular resistor just depends on the resistances involved. You could expect a similar situation to appertain with the voltage divider. And in fact, it's even easier to do. 
we end up with a situation where V1, the voltage across one of the resistors, R1, is a fraction of the total voltage V, and once again, the fraction is decided by the ratio of the resistances, as shown. Now, the last thing that we're going to do for this lecture, because it's winding to a close, is we are going to just extend the formula so that you can quickly remember it without having to derive it from first principles every time as we have done. In the case of the current divider, we have two currents, and so we can expect to have two expressions. Now, if you go back and you rework it, you will quickly see that all we do is change the resistor on top, and then we get the other current. And likewise, for the voltage formula, the second uh, resistor, we simply change the resistor on top and we have the voltage, percentage of the vol total voltage for that specific resistor. Study these four expressions carefully because they are most useful. And to help you remember it, I have circled them so that you can see for yourself. In the case of voltage dividers, the numerator of your fraction, that is the resistive fraction, the resistor value is the same as the voltage you're trying to find. As you can see there, R1 is on top and R V1, the voltage across R1, is what we end up with. And when we want V2, we simply plug R2 on top of the sum of the resistors and we can derive it. In the case of the current, they are swapped. This is the thing that once you remember, you will never ever go wrong. If you're dealing with current, you swap the R2 and R1. So if we want the current through resistor 1, we have to put R2 on top of the resistor sum. And if we want the current for the second resistor R2, I2, we have to put R1 on top of the resistor sum. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and specifically for being part of our lecture wonderful world of electronics and i'll see you soon again <laughs>